This week, the D.C. Council set to take the final vote on the massive crime bill known as Secure D.C. If approved, the legislation will in part bring back drug free zones and will also keep more adults and youth detained as they await trial. Rafael Sanchez Cruz joins us in the studio tonight. Rafa, the bill's sponsor we hear is trying to bring back a controversial amendment ahead of Tuesday's vote. Yeah, Daily, let's break it down for you. So last month, the D.C. Council unanimously voted to pass the Secure D.C. Omnibus Amendment Act. Councilmember Trayon White was the only one to not vote yes, and instead he voted present. But now the bill's sponsor, Councilmember Brooke Pinto, is trying to include a provision that would allow for DNA collection, something that's gotten a lot of pushback from residents as well as from members of the council. After months of mounting pressure, the D.C. Council set to vote on the massive Secure D.C. crime bill on Tuesday. During a public safety meeting this weekend, Mayor Merle Bowser made a push for the approval of the legislative package that includes harsher penalties for gun-related crimes. With the first two months of the year compared to the first two months of last year, we have seen a significant decrease in crime, although we need to see significantly more decreases in crime. And in a last minute effort, the bill's sponsor, Councilmember Brooke Pinto, took to social media to announce she's fighting to include a provision that would allow for the collection of DNA samples for any person arrested for a felony, even if they're not convicted. The controversial provision was removed last month after civil rights groups like the ACLU voiced privacy concerns, and so did Councilmember Kenyon McDuffie ahead of the first vote. We are all innocent until proven guilty. Pinto, who chairs the Committee on the Judiciary and Public Safety, posted on the platform X, DNA analysis is a critical tool to close cases, increase accuracy, prevent recidivism, and support victims. We must include this in Secure DC, particularly for sexual assault and rape survivors. These cases are hard to prove and often committed multiple times. In an op-ed in the Washington Post, U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves also made the argument for DNA collection. Graves, who has also faced backlash for the rise in crime, said 30 states already collect DNA and added that this tool would be crucial in serious rape and homicide cases that his office is working on. Amid concerns about privacy, Graves wrote that the system used for the DNA collection, quote, does not contain any names or personal identifiers of the person. Ideally, we're told Councilmember Brooke Pinto has been lobbying her colleagues to get this DNA collection back on the bill. It's still unclear how this added provision will really play out on this Tuesday vote. Yes, yeah, a fascinating change of course just days before the vote. So we'll see how the debate continues to play out in the council and really on the streets of D.C. where it matters most. Raphael, thank you.